what's up it's molly welcome back to my channel today's video is going to be all about how to move out when you're young and just like my tips from personal experience i'm 20 years old now so i feel like it's more common for people that are in their 20s to be living on their own or being more so independent but i did move out right after i graduated high school and i've lived in three apartments so far which i feel like is a good amount of experience for someone in their 20s so you guys always ask me questions about this kind of stuff and i just thought i would make the first video of hopefully many if you guys enjoy this on my channel I definitely want to start doing like an adulting series of basically just like things that I have learned in my experience that I can share with you guys so let me know if you want to see stuff like that but let's get started with all of the tips that I have I wrote down 10 on this piece of paper that I thought would be really helpful just to start off with so let's get started now the first tip that I have for you guys this one might be a little bit hard to hear but it's to move to a place that you can afford that is the biggest piece of advice that I can give you. It's the biggest piece of advice that I can give you because if you move into a place that like maybe is a little bit tighter on the end of your budget, it's not gonna be worth it in the end. Like yeah, the countertops or the cabinets may look nicer, but you're not gonna be as happy if you have more money. I'm just saying when I originally was going to look for an apartment, I remember looking at like the nicest ones possible with like all the amenities and everything like that. But at the end of the day, if you have a beautiful apartment, but the only thing that you're spending all of the money that you're making on is your apartment, you're not living, you're just living you're just working to pay for where you're living instead of actually going out and doing things. Like it's much better to experience things with your money than spend it on where you're living. So if you can find a cheaper option, always choose that one. So that's my first piece of advice. The second thing I wanted to talk about with you guys was credit and how important credit is. If you are moving out on your own, you are going to need to have credit of some sort or else you won't get approved for an apartment. And I had no idea about this when I was like going to apply for apartments the first time around. Actually, when I moved into my first place I had to have my dad go on the lease with me because I didn't have any credit myself and I was really young so I needed to have someone who had a very well established credit on my lease with me so keep that in mind when you're looking for an apartment that you might have to have someone else sign the lease with you that has experience sorry about the Sun it's making me look like I have a seatbelt on or something but credit is the most important thing and it will be something that follows you throughout your entire life you need it for literally everything to pay off loans you need it for your car payments you need it for a house down the line like I eventually want to buy a house and credit is so important when you want to buy a house that's why like I could never buy one right now because I just don't have enough credit established so this video is actually sponsored by credit sesame and I'm so excited to be working with them in this video because I really do genuinely think that it's something that is so important and that more people should know about when they're younger so credit sesame is not just a free credit score there is so much more to offer on their website it's full of financial information such as personalized finance tips and tools and they update them every single month for free which is insane and also once you sign up for a credit sesame membership you get free identity theft for up to fifty thousand dollars it is an absolutely free product they don't require your credit card at all on their website so you know that like you're not gonna have any hidden charges and it's also just full of financial information that will really truly help you and I can't stress that enough so credit sesame will show you guys your financial potential and like I said it is just so important to have credit and build good credit. I think the only thing worse than not having any credit is having bad credit. So you need to make sure that when you're charging things or when you are paying bills, you pay everything on time because if you're not, it's going to be so much harder for you to make big purchases further down the line. So you guys should make sure to go head over to creditsesame.com for your free credit score and I will have them linked down below as well. <laughs> the lighting is just not in my favor today, but the next tip that I have for you guys is quality over quantity. Now, some people may not agree with this to a certain extent, but I think it is definitely something to keep in mind and that is that when you move into a new place, you're gonna wanna go to Target and buy like seven different decor pillows and like all the mugs and all these fun things but at the end of the day, you don't need those things. You need to make sure that you're investing in the pieces that you need. So I would much rather, personally for me, I did this when I moved into this place. I had to buy all brand new stuff again. And I much rather wanted to spend, you know, a good amount of money on a coffee maker. Okay, I don't know if this is kind of a dumb example, but for me, when I was in my last apartment in Los Angeles, I wanted nightstands really badly. So I just went online and I ordered like the cheapest ones possible for like $100 a piece. So I spent 
spent $200 on nightstands. I got them in and they were complete crap. Like it took me like six hours to build each of them and they just fell apart pretty much. So that was $200 wasted. And that $200 could have been spent on something else that was more valuable. So just be really conscious of your money, I guess is what I'm trying to say. This next tip is for when you're actually living in your space. I learned this the hard way. I feel like everybody has to go through this, but it's finding out how much groceries you actually need, especially if you're only cooking for yourself. Like for me, when I go to Whole Foods, I am just a monster and I see all of these things and I'm like, oh, I want that. I want strawberries. I want raspberries. I want blueberries. I want apples. I want, you know, squash and cucumber. And then you get back to your place and you're like, oh, I have all these fun groceries. But then a week later, everything is bad and you just end up wasting money and food. So going on to the next point is to buy buy frozen as opposed to fresh when you can. So I like to buy a lot of organic frozen foods because it lasts so much longer. If you buy meat, buy it frozen. If you buy, you know, anything that you can buy frozen that is good, buy it frozen because you will save so much money. Trust me, you cannot possibly eat all of the fresh food if you're making it only for yourself. Number five is to budget yourself. And I think that this is so important. So at the beginning of every single month, try and say, okay, how much money am I going to spend on food this month? How much am I going to spend on transportation? If you take Uber or something like that, you know, just kind of have an idea every single month of how much you spend on certain things. So that way you can know if you get a bonus or if you get something like that, how much money extra you have lying around because it can be really easy to go through money really fast. Trust me. <laughs> Especially if you're living with your parents right now, you don't realize certain things that you have to buy like paper towels those are expensive or toilet paper or you know just like little things like that dish soap all those things that your parents probably buy right now you're gonna have to buy and it adds up quick so i think budgeting yourself is really 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 important my next tip is that you don't need to have everything right away i feel like it's so like people just think that you move into your apartment and then you have like all of the furniture already all there and like all of your favorite mugs and all of your decor items and your plants and everything, but it takes time and that's okay. I still have my TV on a table from Ikea that was $20 because my TV stand that I want is so expensive. So I'm saving up for it and I'm not rushing into anything because it takes time. And the point that I'm trying to make is that's totally okay. You don't have to have everything all together at once. Ooh, this next one, limit yourself to eating out once a week. I said it once a week and I'm not just talking like going to a restaurant. I'm talking Chipotle, Panera, Starbucks all those things because oh my gosh, when I lived with Kenzie, whew, we realized quick how fast that moolah can go when you are eating out all the time. Eating out is expensive. $25 here, $25 there, $25 there. And it's not worth it at all when you can just save a ton of money and eat at home. So the next thing I wrote down is to have a day for certain things like a cleaning day, or a kitchen day or a laundry day or you know things like that where you just have a certain day you know that that day you're going to clean your bathroom or that day you're going to clean your kitchen because i feel like if you don't have a laundry day things just start to pile up and pile up and before you know it your whole apartment is a mess and you have to spend an entire day cleaning it and that could easily be avoided if you just spend a little bit of every single day doing something to keep it clean number nine i have always been a very independent person and like financially stable on my own, but I think it's really important to make sure before you move out, keyword before, that you are responsible, you know how to handle your money, and you know, you know, you can take care of yourself. I think that that's like the most important thing because a lot of times people will move out and then be like, oh my God, what, what have I done? Just try and make sure before you move out that you know deep down that you can handle it. And the last tip I have for you guys, this was actually an idea that my parents had that worked out so well for me and it makes my life so much easier. And that is before you move out, if you know that you're gonna be moving out, like say six months from now, what you can do is pay your parents rent. If you're gonna be paying your own rent, pay your parents the rent that you would be paying in your apartment. So that's what I did before I moved into this place. I paid my parents rent every month before I actually lived here. So that way my parents had all of this money. So my parents were technically like my landlord or leasing person and they kept that money. And then when I moved into this place, I already had all of this money saved up to pay for rent. So that way, you know, if I'm ever behind on a month and I'm not making as much money, I have this money to back me up a little bit. It's genius and it will make your life so much easier. And it'll also help you realize if you can afford a certain amount of rent or not. 
It's genius. <laughs> All right, guys, so that was everything for my tips in this video on adulting and moving out on your own when you're young. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if you think I should do like a what you need to buy when you move out or what you don't need to buy, things like that. I just wanna make like a whole adulting series cause like we're all in this together. But yeah, I think that's everything for this video. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much to Credit Sesame for sponsoring this video. I'll definitely leave the link down below. Make sure to go check it out. I love you guys so much and I'll talk to you in my next video very soon. Bye!